guys, Halig Pierce at the ranch. Here I am out on the, the ranch, we call it a ranch. Uh, we have a good sized property here for an Ontario property, 160 some odd acres, enough, more than enough uh, to produce the hay for our horses. Lots of hay for the horses, we have hay left over actually. And uh, here comes the horse, watch out Kevin. Anyway, and, uh, and uh, we enjoy the ranch very, very much. We hunt, we get our wood, we heat with wood in our house. It's a modern house, but we heat with wood as much as we can. We have animals and it's just a wonderful place. Quiet, private, we live at the end of a mile long dead end gravel road. We get no visitors, which is fine. I was in business for many, many years in public relations business, dealing with the public and it was a lot of fun. Did really, really well, but the peace and quiet, fine with me. So I've got some ideas. I've been doing this uh, for a long time. I was born in the small town here in Ontario and spent most of my life around farms and uh, farmers. And uh, I'm one of those old guys who learn how to do everything. So when I was a boy, just a young boy, my dad taught me all about woodworking and about building, pouring cement, welding, fixing engines, everything. Uh, that, type of, uh, that type of background is hard to find these days. They just don't seem to teach kids that st stuff anymore. They teach them how to program and play uh, video games, but that's it. When it, uh, if you say to a, a, somebody under the age of 16 today, if you, please go and get me a red Robert screwdriver or a, uh, a number two Phillips, he has no idea what you're talking about. Uh, you get me the ball peen hammer. He has no idea, he might know what a hammer is. But anyway, the world has changed a great deal. I'm not complaining or saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that I'm one of those old guys that has been able to do everything. And I've been able to solve a lot of the problems around our ranch as well. As things have come up and we've had different ideas and things we need to get done, sometimes I've had to start from scratch and say, gosh, I don't know how to do this. So we'll start and see how it works. So anyway, I've been able, I've had to solve a lot of uh, problems and things that come up around the ranch. And uh, sometimes my solutions have been fantastic. Sometimes they have been so so, uh, but they're still solutions. And I know that some of my ideas might be valuable for you. So I'm going to try to share some of these ideas with you. If there's a good idea in there that's valuable for you that you can modify or use, great. If not, then uh, uh, move on to yourself. But let me know if there's something I can maybe help you with. We do everything here at the ranch. So if there's something you have a problem with at your, your hobby farm or your farm, wherever it is you are, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Okay, so what's this episode about? Well, it's about my wife. Yeah, I've not been able to solve that. No matter what I've been able to do, I've not been, and I'm just kidding, my wife is wonderful. But sometimes she comes up with ideas and uh, they're great ideas, don't get me wrong, but it does sometimes seem to create more problems for me than, uh, than, than it does benefits. We eat a lot of eggs. Usually uh, between us, uh, two or three, four eggs a day. Uh, every day of the week, we eat a lot of eggs. Eggs are good, and we like them. And uh, not only does it create a minor problem in that we don't live anywhere near a grocery store, but we like fresh eggs. So my wife had a bright idea about four or five months ago. She said, I'm going to get some chickens. We just retired a short while ago, a year ago. So she said, I'm going to get some chickens and have fresh eggs every day. I'll go out to the, uh, I'll go out to the chicken hutch and I will get nice fresh eggs and we'll have enough eggs. We might be having some left over. Okay, sounds like a good idea to me. I didn't have any idea what I was getting into here. So a little while later, she said, oh, I've got uh, six, I think it's six or eight chickens. I've ordered chickens. I picked them up in a month's time. You have to get something ready to put them in. I had pictured like a cardboard box, maybe a bit of straw on the bottom, but no. Okay. So here's my chicken coop. Yours may not be the same, but here's some ideas I had. First of all, the actual true coop is this box right here. This section right here, three feet square on the bottom and about three or four feet high. Obviously one side open so you can clean it, just that simple. Now, little tip, make sure there's no lip to catch dirt. So I'm going to put a piece of plastic in here and then I'll put the bedding on top of the plastic so the chickens can do their thing. When it gets so bad it needs to be cleaned, I can just pull the whole thing out, shake off the plastic and put it back in. That way the wood won't be destroyed. Just that simple. So there's my main coop. Now you notice that this coop has ventilation, both sides. And it has a large door at the front for the chickens to go in. So air can go in through the front and out through those ventilation vents. Because the chickens need to have lots of ventilation. Even in cold weather, they need ventilation for their health and to keep it dry inside. The rest of the coop is really pretty simple. It's really just a long meshed in run. And you can see the whole run is 12 feet long completely meshed in, and I used hardware cloth. I didn't use chicken wire. There's a big difference in cost. Hardware cloth is at least twice as much, but hardware cloth is very, very stiff. 
very strong. Doesn't catch and tear and twist the way chicken wire does. You use whatever you think is best for your circumstances. I decided on hardware cloth. The eggs, ah, the, the nests, they're back here. See it here? Accessible from the inside so the chickens can get up into the three nests. There's three nests in here, and they're about 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. And when you want to get your eggs, you pull the pin, lift it, take the eggs out. Reach inside there quietly, don't disturb the chickens, and take the eggs out, and you're all set to go. <clears throat> I've got this securely held with a pin and a latch so nobody can get in there, no animals can get in there and lift it up. And a seal along the top to keep the water out. And the roof comes over top of that, so it keeps this area very, very dry. So, what's special about this coop? What's special about this coop are the wheels. I spent a lot of time on these wheels. The coop is 12 feet long and it's relatively heavy. I used half inch plywood throughout, 4x4 four four base, 2x4s for most of the other construction. It's quite heavy. Initially, I put the wheels right back here at the back. You can maybe see the hole. I had a half inch rod going through and the wheel on the outside on each side. Problem. First of all, because of the weight of the chicken coop, the rod bent. So the wheels ended up like this. Like a, remember the old Volkswagen and Corvairs from behind? So the wheels got bent very easily. Secondly, it's so heavy, I could barely lift it and move it. Didn't work. So, simple, I solved the problem. I went and got some steel, some fairly heavy steel, and I made steel brackets. I welded up these steel white brackets that you see, mounted a good pneumatic tire in the middle of the bracket with a bolt through, and mounted that on the side of the coop, but I moved it three feet ahead. Now it's easy to pick up. I can go to the front, pick up this coop, and move it anywhere I want. And that is the beauty. That's what makes it a tractor instead of just a regular chicken coop. My wife can do this, I can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. I'm 70 years old and I can move this chicken coop around the property very easily. And now you can see a bit of the inside. You can see the ladder leads up into the coop itself so the chickens can run around here all day long, enjoy themselves in the sun or whatever it is they want. And in the evenings, they can just go right into their coop. I made up this simple little thing here for opening and closing the coop itself. So once the chickens are in at night, you just close it up and they're in there. Just that easy. Actually, in retrospect, I didn't need that because you need to get in there to do some cleaning as well. So I actually have this swings open. I didn't really need to have that, but I have it now. Just that easy. Another window, lots of light, strong hinges, and there you go. A chicken tractor. Safe, easy. Not too much work for cleaning. I got some scrap tin roof, made the tin roof on there. It looks good. I'm sure the chickens will love it. We'll have fresh eggs every day. It's easy to move. Hopefully I won't have to do too much work. I hope you like that. And maybe you got some ideas. And I don't think I have $300 invested. Bit of wire, a couple of two by fours, four by fours. I think the two wheels were the most expensive. Now, of course, I did all the work myself, all the little carpentry, the welding and everything else. But uh, most uh, folks that live on a farm can either get that done pretty cheaply or do it themselves. Alec Pierce's chicken tractor. <laughs> anyway, maybe there's some ideas in there for you. Hope that was good. Alec Pierce on the ranch. Talk to you again soon.